Hey there, fellow Narragators. Well, let's uh, take a look at our new caboose here at the JNL Narrow Gauge. The uh, the car that I've been waiting for quite a while to get here, and which is eventually going to become the general offices of our little railroad. So, let's take a look at it. So, this car was built in I think 1951 or 52 by the International Car Company of Kenton. Ohio uh, for the Erie Railroad and it was the C-335 and it was one of a series of cabooses built at that time for the uh, Erie. Uh, it was originally painted red, uh, had the Erie diamond on the uh, bay window, had the, uh, I believe it had the, the lightning stripes and radio equipped on it and um, when Erie and the uh, Lackawanna merged, uh, it was uh, repainted and into the two-tone uh, maroon and gray, and it stayed in that color scheme until Conrail, and, uh, and of course Conrail painted it uh, blue, and of course it's still blue now. I mean, you could still see, you could still you could see the one stripe right there, the yellow stripe, and then you'd have the, uh, you know, the maroon and gray colors. You know, we, I forget what how this one went. I think it was, um, it was the opposite of the locomotive, so it would be maroon down here, gray stripe, maroon up above it. Um, so in its uh, in its history, the thing was beaten up quite a bit. You can see this patch on the bay window. Apparently it got sideswiped by something. All the original windows are long gone. Uh, Conrail replaced a lot of them with the uh, with the aluminum windows. Um, <clears throat> and uh, all the all the interior furnishings are gone. The the trucks on this originally were um, high speed trucks. Um, I've heard they came off of milk cars. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where the trucks came from, but they looked a, a far a far sight different than uh, than the Bettendorf's that uh, were put on under Conrail. And even the trucks here uh, were swapped out, and we sent our roller-bearing trucks out to the Fort Wayne Railroad Historical Society so they could put them under their bay window caboose, which they intend to uh, be able to use when they take the 765 out. So, uh, so those trucks from this caboose will probably be... Uh, You'll see out there in the high iron someday. So in exchange, we got these uh, nickel plate um, plane bearing uh, trucks, which will work just fine for what we want to do here, since I don't think this car is going to be moving much anymore. So let's take a look inside. All right, so there's not much in here. Um, when we got the car, both doors were welded shut and there was nothing in here but some garbage and an old toilet and, uh, and the, um, the bathroom compartment. Um, <clears throat> after looking at the car, realizing that, uh, you know, generally it's in structurally sound condition except for the floor. Um, the uh, floorboards are, they're not particularly rotted, they're just kind of beat up um, and just not in good condition. And so I decided probably the best thing to do is just to replace them. There's several locations where the, the boards are missing or there was a hole cut in for the toilet. Um, and it was also, you know, this here where they had the uh, actual generator it came up in, inside of the car. And we figured that uh, you know let's just let's just replace the uh, the floor entirely. So instead of going with the inch and a half thick boards like you can see here, and the three quarter inch tongue and groove above it, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to use half inch plywood, uh, put that down, and then on top of that, uh, inch and a half. Um, green styrofoam board and then another sheet of plywood on top of it and along the edges along the joints in this I will put uh, either two by fours or two by sixes 
um, to give a little bit of structural strength. But, you know, this stuff here um, is pretty strong. And so sandwiched between two pieces of plywood all tight together um, will give us a good floor and also uh, give us about a, our value of, what, seven and a half, I believe it is. So we'll, at least the floor of the car won't be cold. Um, the, the walls and the ceiling, well, that's another matter. Um, there is fiberglass insulation behind here, but it's a real thin piece, and who knows how well it's stayed in place all those years. Um, however, I just don't have time to rip all this interior out of here to insulate it and put new paneling in. I've got to get this car in a condition to be used as an office in a short period of time. So all I'm going to do here is just, we're just going to strip all this paint off and repaint it, um, plug all the holes the best we can, and uh, just use it as is for now. Now down the road, we decide that the car is too cold and we want to insulate it and remodel it, and then yeah, you know, go in here and cut all the cut all the uh, the welds pull all this off and then go in and and maybe spray foam it and then put another you know uh a sheet of something uh paneling or something in, in its place but for now this will work just fine same goes for the windows um you know these windows here were under steel sheets uh which save them largely from being destroyed. I see the, the big one here has a couple of cracks in it. I'm not really going to worry about that for right now. Those windows are usable. Um, the other side here, now this faces the neighbor's property. Do we really need to have windows there? I don't think so. Um, so I'm just going to keep those blanked off and put another put some insulation there and put another piece of steel on top of it to kind of smooth those out. We're just going to leave those windows gone on this side of the car. Um, on the ends, this window here on the right, I will replace it. Um, you can see, so I'll take these pieces of steel off here, either put a frame in there, uh, you know, I'll do something here and put a piece of glass in with the with with the rubber gasketing to make a um, make a window there um, this side here I don't know yet it depends on what we're doing on the inside whether or not we want to have this window um, and then at the other end the uh, the window here on the left has a steel plate over it and it did a fairly decent job of covering that up um, so I think I'm just going to leave that for now, uh, since it does not require anything. Uh, this side here has the aluminum frame, and um, so I'll I'll get a piece of glass cut for this size with the rubber gasketing and put a window in there, and then take this steel out of here. So I'll have a little bit of light there. Okay, so what is the uh, the floor plan going to look like in here? Well. You know, I'm always someone who jumps the gun. <laughs> Don't wait till you get the floor done and start putting furniture in here. But I've had these two cabinets for years. They're nice, heavy, locking cabinets. And I've always thought about building a desk out of them. So what I think I'm going to do here is put a countertop over here. Uh, do the same thing here. And then come in here... Um, you know, down below the window level and then put a countertop here. And so, you know, this could be my workspace. I'll have my computer set up here. Then I have, you know, two other countertops for whatever else I need to set here. Have uh, the locking drawers so I can keep anything that I need to, to uh, secure uh, in the car. And uh, and then, you know, this will be my seat where I can then look out and survey our uh, our railroad empire, <laughs> so to speak. Um, and then, let's see, the, uh, the stove will go here and I will be putting in a uh, coal stove, a, a caboose coal stove. Um, 
and uh, so that'll that'll get put in the sheet metal backing and then on the floor I'll put another piece of sheet metal down to protect the wood from the embers um, probably going to leave this uh, this table here this is my old kitchen table from home um, I think that works pretty good right there it's a nice place for their uh, volunteers to uh, eat lunch or you know for having a meeting or whatever uh, the uh, the bathroom compartment is going to go away it's just beat up and kind of ugly looking so we're going to clear that out and you know make this a big open floor plan as much as possible I think over here on the left I have a uh, an old couch from home that's there's gonna be a couch gonna go in here so um, you know, go out and have lunch, come back, need to take a little nap. There you go, a place to take a nap. Which, the older I get, the more I need to take that midday nap to uh, give me enough energy to keep going. <laughs> um, I have a set of uh, steel uh, bookshelves that have sliding doors that I got from the Pinelli Railroad. And I think I'm going to put that in over here somewhere. And then maybe our, our couple of filing cabinets in this area. But I'd like to have a place where I can keep all of our railroad books and everything that uh, I'd like to be able to consult here on the property um, in, in the caboose. So I think all the railroad book collection will go in here. And then down here with the stove on the left, I might put some... I might put some cabinets over here, um, kitchen cabinets, and probably some, you know, additional cabinets up above, and turn this into a little food preparation area, so that when our crew members and volunteers um, come in here, want to have lunch, want to get a snack, you know, whatever, long day out running the train, come in here, take a little break, get a snack, maybe in the evening cook something for dinner. You know we'll have that ability to do that here and then on this side probably have another um, another table and a couple of chairs uh, over here and of course this window will be uh, made functional and originally this car had a table and then two chairs uh, two benches here so kind of going back to the way that that originally was and that'll be basically uh, what we're going to do here in this car um, a little bit of an office for me, a place we can have our library, a place where the you know, crew members can get together, you know, food and drink and all that, and keep some of the other supplies in here that we might need. Um, so, you know, so what, uh, let's see, what am I doing right now with the car? Okay. The, uh, the priority is the floor. Um... So I'm, I've got enough materials to do this eight foot by eight foot section. I'm gonna get this done um, and see how well this goes, kind of a proof of concept for what I wanna do for the floor. And then I'll move back here and uh, start pulling uh, the floor up as I go back and then just continue back until I get the entire car done. And then do the, uh, the, the bay windows, that little uh, outcropping there for the bay windows. As I go, um, we'll try whatever methods we can come up with for stripping the paint off the steel so that I can repaint it. Uh, it also needs some electrical work done. The electrical system in these cars are extremely simple. You had a light switch here. Um, and I think those wires go up inside. And they might come out into here. Uh, and then there was a wire that just ran down to the other end of the car. There's some other conduit up in the, the car body. I don't think I'm going to use much of that stuff. I'm going to run conduit down to, to junction boxes. And if I need an outlet, I'll run conduit over and down to the boxes. Um, we'll go through the hole here. And then come out. Probably reuse that. And then have a bit of a porch light up here. So we have uh, lighting on both sides of the car. Um, maybe I'll do, you know, LED uh, motion sensor or something so that once you just climb up on the car, boom, the light comes on. Um, maybe we'll, you know, set it up at some point and get a couple of uh, uh, marker lights to uh, stick in the corners here on the car. 
uh, but everything in here will be LED. Uh, it'll all be powered by our solar installation down uh, down front there that you can see on the uh, on the silver building. I have an extension cord running up there now, but uh, we're going to trench and run underground cable down down there so we can run everything up here off the off the solar. Um, so uh, so that's basically what we've got going on here with this caboose, and uh, I'll keep making videos to uh, keep you up to date of the uh, of the uh, what the the non restoration of the caboose. Not a restoration. This is a what we call an adaptive reuse um, of the car, and uh, hey, there's there's enough of these Erie cars out there that have been preserved and are in much better shape than this, so there's no no issue that I'm not preserving it per se. Um, if you want to see one of these, what it looks like um, when it was on Erie Lackawanna, going out to Marion, Ohio, to Marion Union Depot, they have one, I think it's C306, um, that's on display there that's preserved. There's also a later version of this car in Meadville and it was of a later order so that the exterior is a welded construction and not riveted uh, but it has been preserved and it's a beautiful looking car. So if you want to see what these cars look like when they were working for the Erie, Erie Lackawanna, go see some of the others. We're going to use this car for our own needs as our corporate headquarters and crew room. Um, so, um, so we're not uh, held to uh, you know any historically accurate work that we have to do. So, so that's basically all we got going on, and I'm going to get back to work here and talk to y'all later.